want to show a new painting proposition, a proposition that kind of wants to break from the Western um, canonical idea of painting. And I want to bring more decolonized practice in, within the art world. In, my piece is a very big new commission for the Biennial, and it's made out of 20 panels. And it's a little bit an allegory on muralism, on Mexican muralism, and how painting can function as an epistemological machine that also you know, help us uh, understand our desires and how do we construct our identities. The intention of muralism was to uh, destroy or dismantle the art world as we knew it and kind of bring, uh, you know, painting to everyone, to all the people in the city where the mural was. It was about kind of being anti-bourgeois, anti-elite. It was just like, okay, now we're gonna bring these to the public arenas uh, because art should belong to everyone. I think the idea of gender is also a semiological one, right? Like how do we identify certain objects or things as masculine and why do we do so, or feminine? So why is a machine masculine? Why is it a, a car masculine, right? Like I think, the idea of why this is that masculine is exactly what I try to, uh, you know, rethink in a way of like, I try to vandalize this semiotics, this masculine or feminine semiotic, to understand that behind this there is nothing but an ideology of what is and what is not. And because it's only an ideology, it can also be broken and it can also be reconstructed. That's the real question, how to decolonize ourselves. I think it should start with decolonizing our desires. Because I think our desires became so capitalistic and then, you know, because capitalism, like basically sold us desire. Like you need new car, you need new stuff, you need new things, you need production status to be value as a person. And if you're not, then you don't value. So I think the core thing is to, like you say, fight our internalized fascism, right? Like the fascism that takes us to want more power, to want to win over the other, to compete, to be better. And if we deconstruct these internal structures, we will deconstruct our desires, then our ideas, and then our imagination. Because also that's the problem, right? Like the future that they're selling to us, it's either a total accelerationist capitalist one or apocalypse. So the modularity for me is also a way to express autonomy from one side. And it's a gesture. I don't think I'm achieving it or anything, but it's a gesture. And I also think it talks about that. It talks about this uh, feeling that everybody should be movable, that everybody should be free. You know, this piece can it, uh, change the shape so it can change the context in which it's exhibited. I think the first thing that we can do to change the future is imagine it. Like this is where it will start. But I think, and I'm very strong in this belief, that we will have to live with chaos. We will have to live with uncertainty more and more and instability. But that doesn't mean that that's the only thing that we will have. I think as a person, of color, as we have seen in history, there's been a lot of crisis already. There's been a lot of apocalypses already. And we have found that these people in this situation have also found joy and resistance. So I think we have to stop seeing chaos uh, as an agent of complete uh, despair and as an agent of change and as an agent where a new, new forms of joy can coexist in within these chaos. Otherwise, we will fail. We will fail to have one. <laughs>